Hey FlossTube, it's Christine, Miss Quickie Stitcher, and I'm back for another episode of my FlossTube channel. It's been a few months. The last time I did it was over spring break. Now I'm deep in a summer break. It is July 5th, and um, I'm ready to talk about StitchCon. It was my first year going, and there were a lot of people, I think around 375 people, um, attended and uh, it was good. It was different from the retreats my local L um, my LNS does, um, which has a lot of projects and a theme around it. Uh, StitchCon was nice and that you just sat there, picked the projects that you wanted to do, and uh, talked to new people. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with some of the things that I picked up. Just go straight into it. Um, we all got, and I'm sure if you've seen other StitchCon videos, you've seen the bag that we get, uh, the StitchCon 2019 tote bag, and inside I have all my goodies. Uh, all the things that I bought, all the many things that I bought, <laughs> um, to go over that. So when we got our bags, some of the things that we got inside were, well, I ate some of them, but, um, Everybody got little um, Ohio magnets right there that we can put on our Christmas trees. So that'll be going um, away with my Christmas stuff. Um, we also got a journal, which I'm going to add to my many journals that I already have. Uh, can you have too many? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, we also got... Let's see my name tag. There we go. Miss Cookie Stitcher right there. And they were different according to whether or not you had a Floss Tube channel or not. Um, if you didn't, then there was a heart at the top and the name moved down. Um, so we got those as well. I have so much junk around here, y'all. Uh, we also got some important notes about times and places that you can go eat. The, they had a stitchy bus, which was an old school bus that they refurbished to move people from keepsakes, uh, the shop, to the different hotels. They also had some uh, restaurants um, near StitchCon and the convention center, the Sharonville Convention Center, that we could go to. And we did use some of these uh, to kind of help us out, figure out what we wanted to eat. Uh, one night we ate at Vincenzo's restaurant, which is just down the road from um, the convention center, and it was delicious. Some of the best Italian food I've eaten in a long time. Um, the next night, or the next afternoon, we tried Skyline Chili. Um, I get the appeal of chili on spaghetti. It's just a different type of spaghetti sauce, but um, I think the chili just didn't stick with me, but I'm glad that we tried it because uh, when in Rome, you should try some of the local stuff. Um, and then we also went to La Rosa's Pizza um, that last night we were there. So we wanted to try um, different things that we couldn't find locally uh, to us. And we included me, uh, LaDonna, from Sampling of Memories. I hope I got that right. I may have gotten it backwards. And Tara. And Tara... Uh, you may know her. She is the one who sent Chelsea the limo driver cap. Um, so, uh, from Priscilla and Chelsea, uh, Real Housewives cross stitch. So, we tried those different things um, just to see what we liked from that. Um, some other things that we got was an envelope filled with um, some freebie patterns. Um, which, you know, some I can't show because they're um, just the pattern and no picture. Um, there was one I can show you is Finicky's Be Joyful Always. I have light coming in from the back because the kitten tore the, um, the, the curtains down. So uh, I'm not going to put that back up for the moment. Um, Barefoot needle art, toes in the sand, stitch in the hand. Okay. We have Mrs. Claus's booty. 
which I always laugh when I hear that word. Um, because you know it, it can apply to you know your rear or a pirate in equal measures. Uh, a pedal pusher stitched together by a common thread. So a cute little pillow there. Um, works by ABC, a nosegay from 1604. That one's cute. And Arlene had some other stuff that was at the trunk show. And then uh, I've raised the roof design. I think everybody, you know, just got one of a different variety of stuff. But Helga Hag's beauty bag. So that is super cute too um, as well. So that all came in the um, actual stitch con bag that we got um, as we registered and walked in the door, which in that process was pretty easy. Uh, Tara LaDonna and I saw Stephanie as we got our bags, so that was cool. Um, we also got um, your passports, which just shows you all the different questions that different floss tubers gave um, that you had to get a sticker for. I didn't go around and collect any. Um, I did give myself a sticker for mine which is some, I know I did because, um, oh, it was at the back. You know I'm going to look for it. Oh, here it is. Ah. Which floss tubers cat has her own hashtag? Hashtag Cleo Murder Cat. Which, she's been jumping around up here. She's not as murdery as she used to be since the kitten came in. Um, the kitten's the mischief maker now, so she, um, has been tearing down the curtains when my mom was um, taking care of them while I was, you know, in Poland uh, for a week doing stuff for a graduate course. And then uh, at StitchCon, Poppy was the one that was knocking the water dish over. So she's around here somewhere, right here, causing some mayhem. So, but she's a cutie pie and a cuddle bug. So she's my little cuddle bug. We also got a make and take, which I don't know how I'm going to put this together. It's a scissor fob. And it came with a tassel and a little bust to represent the stitchy bust and the 2019 um, little charm. So that's really cute. Um, and it came with a whole bunch of different tassels. Um, so I'm going to put that together soonish, I think. We'll see. Um, and also from LaDonna, um, got one of her little um, charms. And it um, goes on when you use the ring to hold your floss bags together. So there we go. So I'm looking forward to using that. Um, because it's summer break, I'm going through my usual yearly clean out of the house. And yesterday was the office. I shredded papers and got rid of some cards that are like 20, 30 years old that I don't need anymore. Got rid of a um, pre-K painting that Cleo uh, didn't like. Uh, she's quite the art critic. Um, so I had to get rid of some stuff. Um, it, it was well overdue. Um, and then I'll be going through the other rooms in the house as well. Um, to get that done. So, um, what I did was uh, each day I wanted to have a separate. Sorry, the cat's in the bag. Because uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to have a, a different project for each day. And we also got a praline in our bag. Uh, I haven't had one of these before. Um, the pralines I'm used to. Uh, down in Charleston and Savannah kind of have that buttery. They're not creamy, but they're 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 more just kind of buttery. Um, not exactly hard. Um, so this will be uh, interesting to see how I like that. Anyway, um, so we got there Thursday. First thing we did was go to Keepsakes, and I bought some stuff. Um, this is probably the smallest bag I have. Um, so it's not going to be that one. 
Um, it's not gonna be that one. So in the keepsakes bag, what I got when I went to the store was this cute little V-scap floss holder. Okay, because I use these all the time. Why not? Um, but it's cute. Um, a ring to hold my floss on, whether I use the uh, floss drops or the DMC or the bags. And these cute little, you know how to get those, cute little kitty rollers to help me measure. And yes, I got two. One is a gift. Uh, some heartstring samplery. Uh, they're stickers. I don't care about the crinkles, so we will just keep going with them. If I can get them out, there we go. Um, but the heartstring sampler stickers, because I'm a sucker for stickers, I will just buy all the stickers uh, and then wonder where all my money went. Um, of course, I got Olga. I did Olga's tart. I got to do Olga's... Um, Alphabet. Don't know. May just make this into a long skinny pillow. May not do the letters. Uh, not quite sure yet. That'll, that can wait for a bit. Because, you know, I have plenty to do. It's not like I'm, you know, going to run out of things to do. And then I brought some thread for, um, I have the Time in the season, the Ecclesiastes saying, um, for my big toe designs. So I got some of the needlepoint silks. They're not in the called for colors. They're much, the called for colors are much darker. So I went down, I think, two shades just to make it a little bit lighter. Um, because I didn't care for that too much. So that's the the cat. Uh, so that's the first thing we did is we went to keepsakes, then we registered at StitchCon, then we may have gotten, I don't know, we did something. We, we may have gotten dinner, we did some stitching. And the project for Thursday was one I haven't worked on for a while. And it's one of my older whips, not the oldest. We're working on that one. Um, but Blackberry House by Plum Street. And I filled in those three berries, and I finished the lower half of the birdhouse. Okay. So that's, that's what I did on Thursday, and hopefully once I finish some of my older whips, I can pick this one back up. I really like the design. I thought I'd finish it a lot faster. Um, it's been two or three years, but it just hasn't spoken to me again um, like it had been. So there was that one. That was Thursday. On Friday, I have a finish. It's not a StitchCon finish, but StitchCon lit a fire under me to finish this one up, and it is Tiny Modernist Haunted Mansion. So, there we go. She's all done. I love it. It It's so cute. Um, there were some changes um, at the top. I didn't leave enough space. Um, I started three inches down, but I started like in the wrong spot on like the roof. Like I started here, and I didn't take into account that there was another inch on that uh, the black weather vane. Um, so I think I have it. I probably need to go back and, and look over and make sure that all the back stitching's in. But she looks done. So I'm excited about that. I'll get that framed and hang that up around Halloween. So, again, didn't finish it at StitchCon, but I got enough done. All I really had were the two trees on the side, so I figured might as well get it done. Um, so that freed up a project bag. Um, what was the next Friday? And Saturday. Saturday was the next project. And this one's also been a long one. It's been there for a while. Over the Hills by Brenda Key's Sampler Company. Okay. 
All right, and I finished over the hills and far away. Those two hats, and I'm working on that hill. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm working on that hill with the little feet of a French soldier. So, it's on 36 count something. I don't remember. Um, I have it written down. One day I'll have all that together and I'll remember it and have a little note. But that today is not that day. Um, tomorrow won't be that day either. Um, good day. Who am I kidding? There's never going to be that day. That day will not happen. Um, so this one got upgraded from its bag to my favorite bag. I do as I please. Which my friend Kelly gave me. And yeah, hopefully that'll get me to, to finish it a little faster. Keep that in the, the pile. So there's that. Um, I might need to stick that in that bag too. I'm trying to go through all my bags and get everything organized. Um, I think the craft room is going to be the last one to clean out. Um, just because it's a hot mess right now. And the cats loved it. They spend way too much time in there. Uh, we also got a freebie from Lindy Stitches. And it is this cute little turtle. Look at how cute that is. The little aqua and the red. Seems to be the color that I've been enjoying lately. So I like that. That's cute. That will go in the pile of freebies that I'm going to have to add to the collection or find a home for. Okay. Um, on Saturday, I did Over the Hills Far Away, and I also did my Smalls Exchange. And because there were so many people... Uh, at StitchCon this year, they did a four-part Smalls Exchange. And when you got there, you put your hand in a bag and you pulled out a poker chip. And it was, I think, like red, green, blue, white, or something like that. Um, so you had four different groups. And when it was your turn, you, you put your stuff on the, the table. And I put mine up and I gave the uh, unicorn Bisporn you that Craft and Chris received. So hers was, she was actually the first one to go up. So... When I went up and didn't see my bag, I was like, yay, someone actually liked the bag. And um, I like this bag. I laid this in the old-fashioned clothing. So I picked this one. And inside, perfect for the 4th of July, is a flat fold by Mary T. from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And it says, grand old flag. It's like Betsy Ross is sitting there making that grand old flag. And every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, this is made. I've done a flat fold before, but my mat boards aren't always straight. Look at that. I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's so cute. And um, I like what she did here with the accent fabric. And then she sewed all that together. And then you see the little, the little X's. So, um, and then the embellishment at the top. So I love it. And it'll come out. It'll probably stay out a good portion of the year. It's not just July 4th, but it, it it's adorable. I love it. So thank you, Mary. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, some people gave huge baskets with lots of little uh, stitching accessories in it, but um, the bag, first of all, clinched it for me. And second of all, I flew. So I didn't want to have to worry about having to transport this basket and all this other stuff home because I went crazy at the StitchCon Annex. So I guess maybe maybe that's the next bit. I have another bag here. I don't know what's in here. I do, but I don't. Oh, I tried doing this one. It's a never-ending cycle. Like, I can get a good part of this done. I got NEVE done. And it just wasn't speaking to me. So that's when I went to Over the Hills. And I was much happier. So this might go in the Better Late Than Never pile. It'll eventually get done. I may even switch the bag out. But um, we'll see how it goes. I might change my mind. 
so what about all my other stitchy goodness that I bought? I've been hinting at it for all of the video, and I've only showed you what I got at um, the actual store, Keepsakes. So Friday, Thursday. Thursday night, we got a sneak peek at the annex and all the cute stuff that it had. And, you know, I had a line of attack. We, you know, Tara, LaDonna, and I were like, go down, eat breakfast, go downstairs, start lining up for the annex. We get there, it's like 8.05, people are already lining up for the annex. So we got it good. And they opened all the doors at once, so you wanted to be close to the door. And, oh, all... All the stuff, all the cute stuff. I, I knew what I was going to hit. Um, a lot of people went to the fabric tables first. Normally, I'm a person who prefers to find the project and then get the fabric for the project. But this is not exactly how it works. I didn't go right to the fabric. I will tell you what I went right for. It's not stuff I'm currently calling out. So Keepsakes has a kitten, has a cat named 310 because she is a black kitty just like my poppy. So they had a 310's shop um, where they had little needle minders and other little things um, that, that, that they made as well. And I had to go to that one first. That's where I went to first because I wanted to find all the stuff that looked like poppy like this little ort jar and why the broken ear because she's been fixed so she has a little notch on her ear now my poppy doesn't have that she got the green tattoo from the humane society all right um so i will be putting that off to the side so i can put my orts in it now i got this third peep Super cute, and again, one ear shorter than the other. It's 310. Super cute. Super cute. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. A matching ruler. And I have two rulers. Okay. The other one, again, a gift. What else? I got needle minders. Now, I'm not a big needle minder person. I don't jump on. Oh, I have to get this one. Let's go to Etsy. But I bought plenty of needle minders this time. Um, I got this one. And each of them was a little different. Okay, so I found a little blue flower that I thought was perfect. And that will go on my needle minder. That's why I'm putting stuff in different piles. And then there's one. And this one reminded me of Poppy. Somehow. There. Yep. That's what Poppy looks like. Now, I did not see 310 when I was at the store, but there were so many people in there, I didn't really expect to. All right, so what else did I get? Because that's all the 310 stuff that I wanted. I got a little meter corner, corner gauge to show me three inches. Okay, so that's super helpful. I actually needed one of those. Um, I got some sticker plates that Lindy Stitches came out with, and those go on the back of a stitch work if it's framed. Um, Needle Minders. Huey the First, Queen Elizabeth the First. Is that a little better? And that just goes with all the Tudor uh, pieces that, um, that I have lined up. I got, and this is a gift, the TARDIS, which that's super cute too. I almost want to keep that one, but I have a TARDIS one already. And then this one, oh, it's a kitty. You know I had to get that one. You know I had to. And that was a Puffin and Company. So I thought that was cute. Next. Uh, coloring cotton had stuff there, so I picked some colors out. There is ash plum, black walnut, and fawn. And I tried to get some, some that just kind of went well together. And it's not the best light, but 
purples and grays and shades like that. And I also was able to get some color and cotton fabric. Now, it wasn't easy because, of course, everybody wants the fabric tables and color and cotton is um, quite the thread now or quite the fabric now. Um, it feels nice. Um, I haven't used it yet. So I managed, once the crowd died down, to find a few things that I liked. This is 36 Count Ballerina. And it's got a little pinkish tone to it. And then Hearth, which is like a purple gray color. And that is a 32 count. And, um, so you can see where my colors have been leaning towards. Patterns. It's got Shakespeare's Peddler's Passport Pin Cushion, which looks like it'll work with some of those, um, little leftover bits of fabric and I got the journey box by Jeanette Douglas I don't have the box I might end up trying to get one of the trays and then just switching it out if I get any of the other pieces but um, I thought those were super cute um, as well All right, so that was the first trip to the annex. And then, of course, once things die down, you're like, what else can I find? What did I miss in my rush to get stuff the first time? You know what you find? You find trouble. You, you find trouble for yourself because you have to get the wool felt kit for the journey box so you can finish that off. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good, no problem. You also have to get the embellishment package, which is all of those threads, the silks, and all of the beads. And I probably could have done without that. I probably could have found what I needed to. All right. But it's okay. How often do you go to Stitch Con? Once a year, if you go every year. Savior's Prize. By Shakespeare's Peddler. Okay, it's not too bad. I can manage. This is where I lost my mind. I bought fabric. I bought a half yard of fabric. Fabric's expensive. This was $54, but it's under the sea fabric. Tiramisu. Can you see that? 46 counts. What? was I thinking? I wasn't. I wasn't thinking. Um, I think I might do that, my big toe design on it, uh, because they're huge. And I don't want it to be that big. And if I did it in 28 count, it would cover an entire wall. And if I later want to find the pattern for, Be for the Beatitudes, this can be another big one. I don't want it to be that big on the wall. So what I need to do, start now, while I still have eyes, a magnifying glass on my aunt light, and just start it now. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to see if that works for me. I don't know if that's going to work for me. And then, I think that works on me. Put a couple stitches and see how it goes, right? So those are all my purchases. All my purchases um, from StitchCon. I just like that Savior Sprays. It's it's really pretty. It has all those different motifs, and I was standing in line thinking of, and I was holding on to this just like this, and thinking about it. And the lady behind me told me, and I wasn't particularly thinking this color for this, why she wouldn't use this color for it. 
and I told her I wasn't sure if I was going to use this poly for it. She had a nice 10 minute conversation about it, and which I appreciated. Um, I like to get different ideas um, about it. Um, and I'm still, of course, looking at everything that was on the tables because what if there's something else I missed? What if there's something else I needed? I don't know. I need to keep an eye on it. Uh, but by that time, the fabric had had dwindled down. Um, so that particular count of tiramisu was what was left in a half yard. There were some quarter yard pieces of like 32 counts, but I'm like, let me just try to go blind with this 46 count. What's the worst that can happen? I go blind. So, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. I will be using it and, and moving on. And um, I'll keep you updated. So, some other things that I have been doing that are not related to StitchCon, that I didn't take with me to StitchCon. I've had a few finishes since the last time I made a video. Find my finishes box. Pick that out. That's where I put some of my finishing embellishments. I was doing Sue Hillis's A Study in Blue because Painless Crossing is going to be doing a uh, finishing course with that. I'll finish that. I use the called for fabric, but I use this Victorian Motto sampler thread color. Not sure what it is. Um, but it's grays and, and deep blues, and, and I loved it. So let's see the pieces. Here's the scissor swap. Okay, it's all the blues. This is the pink cushion. And I tried to keep the kind of the fading of the colors going and, and matching a little bit. I didn't want it to be too crazy. And I think I did decently. The top, gather the threads of your life and stitch them into joy. So I just love the color. I'm so glad I picked out that color. Um, it was better than I had anticipated. And then the alphabet band. So here's A through M. And then to the end. Put my initials there. Love the color. Love, love, love the color. Um, so at the end of July, we'll be doing the class on that. So, looking forward to it. Can't remember if I showed y'all this one. This came from the retreat that I did. Stuck in the kitchen. Much rather be stitching. And that was a stony, stony free. Stony, this, the stony one. Stony Creek, I think. Yes, that sounds right. So those are finishes, like complete finishes of a pattern. I have finished the top of the Meow Block by Hands On Design. So I was excited about that. Finished that right before I Remember when I came right when I came back from StitchCon, and so then I was able to start the um, the band that goes around, and I've gotten some headless cats, but they have bows, and then the knitting baskets over here. Uh, and then a mouse and a mouse tail. And at first I'm like, oh, let me get these arrows out of the way. They're not arrows, they're fish bones. Um, 
Now, I did get a fat quarter of fabric for this, but that's with three inch margins on all sides. And there's a top, a bottom, and the, um, the side, okay, the band. And I've done a couple pin cushions before now, and that just felt a bit much for me. So I started with two inches, and when I cut it, you can see I did about an inch, maybe half an inch. I did half an inch. Um, and this one I did, I did an inch off the side here. And there's a little bit more space up here than it needed, but I wanted, I wasn't quite sure. So I'll still have a good piece of fabric left when I am done with it. So looking forward to that. Um, I think we're also doing a Friday finishing get together uh, to finish whichever hands-on design little um, block party um, everyone decided to do. Some did the woof. I did meow, some did one of the houses uh, that are available. So those are some finishes and works in progress. I'm also, you saw over the hills, that might go away for a little while because I pulled out my oldest whip, which I got when I went to England nine years ago. It is a John Clayton and it is under the arch and it reminds me of Pemberley from any one of the Pride and Prejudice movies and I've gotten pretty you know about halfway done on it there are a few mistakes on the outside edges um, what I like about this is it does uh, long vertical stitches so it's it's a vertical stitch an X that goes like this and zipping like this it takes over the half of the space. So you put two long vertical cross stitches next to each other. And it does the same horizontally. So instead of going like this, the stitch covers half the block. And that gives it um, just kind of a different look. You can kind of see it right down here with this blue green. Okay. Um, and I just think that kind of gives it an interesting look. And it's also up in here with the green and the gray. So I just need to get back into that. Maybe I can just knock that out. And then my oldest whip will be finished. I think it's my oldest whip. I haven't found anything that's older. Um, though there is a possibility. Um, I've had projects longer. Uh, but they hadn't been started, so I, I don't count those as whips. Um, so after Meow Block, I'm going to do John Clayton's Outlooks. Under the Arch, Under the Arch. There we go, Under the Arch. Then maybe Over the Hills if I don't get bored with that and move on with something else. Um, last little bit because we're getting to 40 minutes here. And I don't want to get to an hour. Other projects, knitting a baby blanket. And I'm just using acrylic pound of love for this because it's baby spit up, baby's poop. Uh, accidents happen. And I want it to be easy to wash. So if you see there, that's the bottom of a little heart. And there's going to be panels of six hearts along the bottom. And then it's going to be about eight tall. Um, so that'll use up some of my pink pound of love yarn um, and then so that's knitting what's the last thing reading I want to read this one Elizabeth of York wife of Henry the seventh mother of Henry the eighth I she was around tail end of the Wars of the Roses Richard the third all of that I really really want to read this one um, last couple of years, I've been on a reading kick uh, with all of these medieval and renaissance queens. So we're going to con continue like Eleanor of Aquitaine. I actually read one of Mary Boleyn last year that I really liked, even though she wasn't a queen. Um, but I need to finish one. I've been reading this one for months. Six, seven, eight months. American Lion by John Meacham. Andrew Jackson. 
and these are about his years in the White House. It gives a brief overview of his early life, you know, the, the duels, the American Revolution when he was a young child. And I don't have, I have like 30% of the book left to read. Um, sometimes it's so boring. Sometimes it's so boring. And I need to, I, I need to power through it because I'm teaching U.S. History again next year. Um, that's not my favorite. Uh, I like these better. I like this better. Um, this is helping me, though, understand Andrew Jackson and the time period in which he was president um, and the, you know, decades leading up to the Civil War um, and how secession wasn't just a, oh, Abraham Lincoln's president, we need to secede. Um, it had been an idea for a while um, with course the New England states during the War of 1812 and then of course the nullification crisis with Jackson in the 1830s when South Carolina felt that the federal government was overstepping its bounds with some of these tariffs. So interesting. I'm trying to power through it. Not too much left. And the promise of this is making me want to finish it. So that's it for today. Um, come back maybe next month. See how my stitching is updated. I have one more trip planned. Um, so this June I went to Poland for nine days. And then StitchCon for three. And then I have four days in Philly for a conference. So I might actually bring some stitching with me to that. Because there's nothing else I need to see in Philly. I've seen the Liberty Bell. I've seen Independence Hall. I've seen the Mütter Museum. Um, I don't need another cheesesteak. Um, I do need to go to Shane Confectionery and Franklin Fountain. That's it. So I'm going to be there 14, 15, 16, the, the, uh, three nights. I, I think I can manage that. Um, so I might bring some stitching with me. I just don't have that right now. So anyway, thank you for tuning in again. And I hope you have a great summer. Bye.